Hi guys, uh, welcome to this laser cutting um, workshop. So thank you guys for joining. I'm Vaughn, I'm the lab and community associate at Foundry powered by IFA Paris. Um, so what that means is actually I work um, in the uh, technology department of IFA Paris. And uh, here what we do is work with startups on the incubator program. I'm currently actually in the space here so we've got the co-working area here, and then we are actually in the technology area right here. So we're gonna be mainly using this one here, the laser cutter. So I just wanted to give you a very brief intro today, um, just so that you get more you know, context of exactly why we're doing this today. Um, so basically we offer many courses here, such as the MBA Fashion Technology course. Um, some of the students who actually literally started just about a month or two ago, uh, it's a very new one. And then we also have the fashion design and tech course that we have here. Um, and I actually teach the second year of that course. Um, and what they do is actually learn 3D printing right here, as well as the laser cutting as well. So one of the elements that we've taken from that course is actually the um, making your own handbag laser cutter. And that's actually what we're doing today, of course. Um, so just want to make sure that everyone can actually hear me clearly. Is it too noisy in the background? Everything's fine? Yeah? If you can just give me a nod. <laughs> Yeah, okay, perfect. I see some thumbs up there. Um, so yeah, it would be great uh, to have uh, interaction with you guys throughout the whole thing. It is a very informal workshop. Um, I like to have a lot of fun. Um, so I just want to make sure that all of you actually have your pieces of paper, pens and pencils, glues, things like that. I have my little lineup here just for your reference. So do you guys have your paper? Paper, scissors some pens, pencils, uh, because what we're going to do today is actually learn the basics um, of the process of creating your digital file that would be a handbag and then making that into a 3D file of a physical handbag after it has been laser cut. So there is a process to that um, and I'm just obviously going to take you through that today. I hope you also have Illustrator or Photoshop I'm not sure if we put that on the event bright, but that is something that we do need to make this happen. Um, so if you guys have that handy as well, we can kind of do things um, along together. Uh, so I want to just begin with sharing my screen. Um, so yes, I was just saying it would be great for you guys um, to know a little bit about the context again. Um, so here we have the wooden um, handbags as well as leather handbags and so on. Um, these are all different shapes and sizes, as you can see. Um, and one really important aspect for you guys to bear in mind is that when designing something that's to be laser cut or even 3D printed, um, you have to bear in mind that, in fact, actually, it has to be something that um, at the end you can add um, fastenings at the end because when you laser cut, it's not necessarily just going to finish that whole thing. You are just going to get a piece that is just cut and then afterwards, uh, you have to obviously finish it. So it's just kind of like sewing. Again, I'm not sure of your backgrounds, but with sewing, for example, you have maybe your fabrics and then you sew a dress, for example. And then after that, you have to add the buttons, the zips and so on at the end. So it just works the same way as this laser cutter. Um, so as you can see, we have very intricate ones such as this one, um, this wooden one here, which I absolutely love. Um, you have to bear in mind with laser cutting that it is all about the choice of materials um, as well as how it's going to move and so on. So you can see something like this has these lines here um, and these lines are actually to help the movement of the bag. And then just as a design feature on the side, we have the, the, this guy over here, which I absolutely love. You have to be aware that some of these things are going to be quite difficult to do just because uh, you have to be aware of the distances as well of um, each shape that you're going to do. And that is also determined by the material you're using. So if you're using something like this, as you can see, a lot of these cuts are absolutely fine to do. 
but if you're then going to do um, something else that is a bit more fragile, such as leather, such as this guy here, this one has a lot of cuts um, and they managed to actually keep it very strong. But most of the time uh, you actually uh, can't always do that because it may all just kind of fall apart. Um, and those are just basically some of the things to be uh, aware of. And we are specifically using Mr. Beam laser cutter here. And what, what Mr. Beam is capable of doing is basically laser cutting anything up to approximately 20 millimeters thickness. Um, so this can be wood, this can be leather, even paper, um, as thin as paper is possible as well. Um, so we're obviously going to see some of that as well. Now, uh, some of you guys may be having ideas already of exactly what kind of bag you might want to make, um, what kind of material you may want to make it out of. So I'm just going to show you a very quick example here. This is one of my favorite uh, YouTubers when it comes to laser cutting because she uh, literally just experiments. She shows the whole process. And I just thought that this process is a perfect example of what we're actually trying to achieve today. And that is something that's very simple, very time efficient. And that's pretty much that. So here we have, uh, we're starting off with paper, which some of you guys may have already seen on Inventbrite actually. Um, and on Inventbrite, what we have is uh, some examples of those. So actually, let me just show you those first uh, before I get into this process and then you get more of an idea. Okay. Uh, I don't think you can actually see it there. So I'm just gonna share the desktop itself. Okay, so you should be able to now see this desktop that I have here. Uh, so we have this lovely bag, um, which again, started from a paper. Uh, that's one of the students that I teach as well, very proud of what they were able to achieve there. Um, and then we have next, the, uh, the whole kind of class and what they were all able to achieve. So we've got then different shapes there again, all kind of glued together. Um, and the reason why I teach it this way is because then with, um, with that, if you kind of make it from scratch on paper, you're able to see it in your mind as well, exactly what the outcome might be when you then laser cut. You don't want to waste time doing all this work digitally to laser cut and then find out that actually maybe the sizing wasn't right, maybe the shape doesn't quite work together, especially when you're working with gussets such as this. So you have, what a gusset is, is actually basically the sides um, or at least kind of the, the infill, I guess, of the bag. So in this case, that would be this side here. And then the size would have to be determined by the width here, as well as up here, there. Um, and then we also have another one here, quite intricate, this guy here. If you guys can see that. Um, and then you also have to consider as well just how it's all just going to stick together. Are you going to sew this at the end? If you're going to cut this out um, in, leather, in leather, are you going to sew it in the end? Is it going to be more flat like this guy, these two guys here? Um, and if that's the case, then you don't have to actually worry about the gusset as much, which is obviously the side one. Instead, you have to worry or not worry, but at least consider um, how it's going to close, for example. So in this case, we've got a little section here. Um, and then the other thing as well is how your handle, if you're going to have one, is going to attach to this as well. So you don't have to 3D print or, um, or laser cut this whole thing uh, in one go. You can actually just laser cut the bag part, um, including the flap. So obviously it has to be an open plan. If you guys have, uh, if you remember your, your days in school uh, where you had to make a cube out of paper, it's pretty much that. You start off with your flat kind of cross shape uh, with approximately, I think it would be five uh, boxes um, altogether. Then you have the folding lines, which you then, um, after you've cut out the, the main cross, you fold it together and stick it together and you're there. And there's one more thing as well that many of you guys might be already aware of um, if you're within uh, the fashion industry. It is the seam allowance that you need if you're going to be sewing this together. So in this case, there was no seam allowance because they wanted it with kind of raw edges and just folded over. But in other instances, if you want to sew it together, um, so actually I think the great example would be this guy here. So kind of this, um, this, this guy here, if you guys can see that. Um, so that one um, would have to be considered on the sides. So here, wherever you see the green tape, that's where they've taped it together. And then you have some seam allowance inside, um, allowing it to actually still have 
that size and that shape at the end. Um, so that's those are the things to consider as well as the overall size. So we are limited for the size that we can have on our laser cutter. It's approximately 30 by 50 centimeters. So just bear that in mind, because actually with this workshop, what we're trying to achieve is first today make our paper versions and then make our digital versions, which is pretty much just tracing from whatever you would have made on paper. And then after that, um, we'll be able to laser cut that for you and send you those files, um, or at least those physical ones afterwards. So just again, it's not the case of we're gonna make, give you the finished product. In fact, we're actually going to give you the flat laser cut product that you would have made. And then afterwards you can finish it off at home. So this is where you have to consider all the things I've just mentioned make sure that is in the digital file, which I'll show you very shortly how to actually execute that. And then we can see uh, the lovely artwork that you're able to produce at the end. Um, and just one more thing as well, it's about how you are using the material. So in this case, you can see some of the bags are very structured. So in this case, I mentioned about the wood, that was a great choice for the previous one. But actually in this case, we have as well other options such as leather like that I mentioned. But with leather, it can be a little bit floppy if you're not using any sort of structure behind it. So if you have fusing, some sort of cardboard at the back, you can definitely utilize that as well. So we can get back to the little tutorial that we were gonna see there. Just one second. Yeah, so this is the tutorial I was mentioning. So this is a great example of exactly what we need to achieve today. It's only one hour, obviously, but at least we are still able to go through the process and then you can finish it in your own time as well. So just to really, we don't obviously have 14 minutes to watch this whole video, but just so you can see exactly what this is, um, you will see that we're starting off with the paper and then the labelings as well. So that's very important. I have an example here to show you. Um, I don't know if you can see like the little screen on the side, but you can see an example here of a paper version. And this is where you have to really be aware of exactly how you are. If you're gonna have text, for example, how is that going to look when you're actually done? Because this, if that was done kind of the wrong way uh, around, once you folded everything, it might be upside down, which I've done before. So make sure you don't make that mistake. Um, and then you have some measurements as well, if you want to be very accurate with everything. And then you have your openings that I mentioned there. Now, in this case, uh, she is working with plywood. So she is basically using the lines to allow movement with that material. Um, but in your case, maybe you don't want to do that. So you don't need all these random lines. Instead, you can just work specifically on the artwork that you want to work on. So that could be any shape, that could be a logo maybe that you might already have or your name. Um, it would be helpful actually if maybe you put your names on there so that whenever we get the whenever we get the artworks, we know exactly who it belongs to and so on. Um, but yeah, this is just how she's doing it there and we've got the openings there. Now uh, you might be wondering why there are different colors or maybe you're not, maybe you didn't even notice it, but there are different colors on the screen. So this is another important factor of the laser cutter because there are different things it can achieve. It can achieve cuttings and it can also achieve, um, I can also achieve uh, etching as well. So I'm just gonna quickly stop sharing this so I can show you exactly what that looks like. So here we have the lovely, um, it's, it's kind of like a foam, uh, neoprene kind of thing. And basically this one is an example of how it's cut out. Um, and it's actually not cut all the way through, if you look carefully. Uh, that's just kind of the burn mark at the back, but it's not cut all the way through. And this is a um, kind of like an embossing rather than an etching, because I basically put the laser cutter in three categories. You can cut it all the way through, so you can achieve something like this. So it's all the way through, very clean lines, uh, but you can also have something like this, which is a bit of engraving. That's when it's really kind of engraving into the fabric. And again, you don't see that on the other side here. Uh, and you have the same there. 
uh, but you can see a bit of, you can kind of see through this one, and that's just because of the intensity that it would be set on on the laser cutter itself, on the software. Um, and then we also have some other examples here and then some other cutouts. So that is that, and this is a foam, it's like a foam board fabric. And then another example here, we have this guy. So this one is the lovely etching. This is a great example of etching. This is a velveteen fabric. And you can see actually with the etching there that all it's doing is scratching off the surface of this fabric. And then from what you can see there is kind of what's underneath that top uh, surface of the fabric. So it's coming out, coming out a little bit brown, uh, which is totally normal. Um, and this is actually a picture that I got on, online of flowers. You may not be able to see it properly on this um, over here, but actually this is an example of what you can achieve on Illustrator as well, if you're not familiar with that. And that's really it uh, in terms of those options. Um, and the reason why I brought this up now is because um, we saw the different colors on the screen uh, with our um, example there. So you can see orange there and you can also see the black lines. The orange lines are actually saying that it's not cutting all the way through. It's actually just gonna be engraved, just like what I showed you there where it doesn't cut all the way through. Now the other side of it is the black line. In this case, the black line is gonna cut all the way through. So you have the hole just like this one here. Um, and obviously that's where she's gonna use for the handle to go through. So that's very important to remember that because that is what you're gonna have to work with if you're doing Illustrator or Photoshop. So you know if something's cutting through or if, if it's just etching. And this is how the software will be able to read that. So if we just continue on, this is now what that looks like. If you remember those orange lines that she did, that's what that now looks like. And she's got some holes here because she's gonna sew through those. Um, and again, this is more of a design feature. It depends how exactly you want to design that um, so you can sew around it. Now, if I just kind of go back, you may notice that she doesn't have any sides um, on that one. Uh, and that's actually because she's later going to put fabric in it so that you, you can see, um, obviously here, uh, with the measurements that she was doing on the board, that was all for that. That's the gusset now that she's working on. Um, I can send you guys this, um, this tutorial so you guys can do it in your own time as well. Uh, but she is now going to uh, put this with fabric. So I'm just going to fast forward all the way to when she's doing so. Uh, so that is, that's about here. So, she, oh, I think I'm going to have an advert. Um, but yeah, she's going to be using now that fabric to actually be the thing that actually holds it together or else, um, obviously it's just going to all fall apart. Um, sorry for this advert. <laughs> um, so here we have the lovely fabric now that is in inside. So this is just to show you now that you don't have to laser cut that whole thing. You can also mix and match things. So in this case, she just cut that fabric and now she sewed it in there um, or just glued it in there. Now, personally, I always tell my students, don't glue it. I don't want to see glue. I want to see um, sewing. I want to see stuff that uh, kind of goes into each other. Um, if you remember the first wooden bag I showed you at the beginning, that one uh, for the gusset, the sides and the front and the back, they all kind of go together through kind of puzzle pieces. Um, and th that is one way you can do it. Another way is doing this, basically sewing the outer shell with the inner shell or this gusset in this case. Um, so now if we just keep going, now she's just doing a bit of the trimmings and the finishes and stuff, making it look nice. Um, and in this case, she's applying uh, tape here to actually then, um, well, I'll keep that going, uh, to, keep, to protect the actual fabric. You will notice, um, and please do make note of this, I don't want any complaints um, on the emails, that it can be very messy with the laser cutter just because remember it is a laser, it is lasering through, it's burning through the fabric when it's cutting these holes. So uh, that's why she has used this tape to actually protect that leather so you don't have, um, you minimize that, uh, those marks. Um, this is fine really, because it's a black fabric, but usually if it's a light fabric, like the one I showed you, um, I don't know if you can see me on the smaller screen, but you do get a bit of brown uh, coming through there, which is totally normal. That's where you can also work on the intensity of the lasers as well. 
And then now she's just working on some more design stuff, which you don't have to see. Uh, but again, you can watch if you like in your own time. And I think at the end, she has the final pieces. So that is what that looks like right at the end. We've got the lovely bow there. And then now we've got the bag as well. This one with the fabric inside. And as you can see, the holes that she made, it, she just used those as guidelines to sew because obviously with the needle and thread, you can't go through wood. That would be quite stressful. Um, so she's actually thought about that through the design uh, the digital design and then now through this and then that's it pretty much um so that's that i don't know if i have any questions at this stage yeah no questions yet okay perfect well i'm hoping then that means it's all clear so what i'm going to do now is just show you what that looks like on the actual laser cutter itself and then we're going to crack on and actually start making our own paper bags great so we can change the camera okay is that fine now Perfect. So I'm just going to bring this a bit closer. So at the moment, um, how we basically work with this is actually that we do this through Wi-Fi. So with Wi-Fi, um, it's then I can connect this laptop to the actual uh, laser cutter. Now, I made sure so you guys can see this because it's very important if you ever actually want to laser cut here at the lab or any, uh, any lab, uh, you have to um, abide by the safety rules. So you have to obviously know about the light. It is a laser beam again, so you have to be careful. Um, and then you have to also be mindful of, you also can't leave the laser cutter uh, unattended as well. And then you have to also use a trusted network, which obviously we're doing. And then you click, I understand. And then the homing cycle is there. Now, usually the downfall of using Wi-Fi is that we can't see the live here. Usually you should be able to see the live there. Uh, so I'm just checking that everyone can see that. Um, so yeah, usually whatever is in the actual um, laser cutter, you should be able to see there. But unfortunately we can't do that because um, sometimes the Wi-Fi will be a little bit slow, uh, but there's no problem with that because what we can do if we have our shape. So let's just pick an example. So the bag that I was doing, I'd like to use this one. So this is an example of one of the students bags that we use, which you probably saw as well on the promo images that we uploaded on social media. Uh, this is again using the black lines for the cutting and the orange lines for the etching. Yeah. So then in this case, we have actually the uh, orange lines and the black lines. As you can see, it's quite a lot going on there. So she had obviously holes cutting there um, as well as the design features there. So just remember, in this case, when you're doing any folding lines, you can use the orange line, but just be mindful that it can come out as an actual line, a little bit like this, but just just obviously one line, not the whole thing. Um, but you also don't have to do that. You can also just have your paper version lay on top of that if this is to scale and then just do your, your lines um, and so on according to that. So um, now we have this lovely bag here. We want to laser cut that. So after you have given me obviously your files, I would go into this uh, mode here where we can now choose the material that we're cutting. So we have the foam board or felt. In this case, if we're using something like the fabrics that we've got here, these two options are actually pretty fine. And the reason why these are already, these are basically default settings that we already have. Um, and in this case, actually, um, we are able to then see uh, something that's a similar one. So let's just say we were doing the blue one or maybe the pink one, actually. If we're doing the pink, uh, we pick any one that's kind of similar to that because according to the color is also the intensity that you need. So let's just pick this one. Then you have the option to engrave only or to actually cut three millimeters thickness. So I'd like to do that. But remember, I have orange and black on this. So it's not just going to cut through. It's also going to etch. So I am going to drag the orange to the engraving part and then having the cutting part there as well. Now, these are all the default options for this specific option. Um, and that's pretty much something you can change if you need to. If you think that this is actually gonna be a bit more tough than three millimeter 
thickness default settings there. You can actually increase the intensity. Um, the speed uh, is always better if it's slower because then it really gets into that fabric and really cuts through. Or if you really just want something very fast and like a draft version, you can also make it faster. Now with the passes, that's just how many times it's just gonna go over the same place. So in this, in this case, it's gonna be times two. And that's pretty much that in terms of the settings. Um, and then at that point you would start, I haven't got anything in there, so I won't uh, do it properly, but it's just so you guys can see the process there. So usually it takes just a few minutes just to actually load. And then afterwards it will then connect. So you can see the lights have actually changed. Oh, you, you can show this one now. The lights have actually changed on the laser cutter. So it was white, now it's more of a blue or maybe it was green before. Um, and then you can actually just click to start. So you'll be able to see this, uh, this little one moving there. So I'm just gonna start it and then pause it afterwards. But yeah, that was literally just to show you that how it moves. Um, and if you're worried anything about kind of uh, measurements and so on, you can actually just make your file to scale. Um, and when you do that, it's just measuring that on Illustrator and so on. But that's pretty much our lovely Mr. Beam, Mr. Beam laser cutter. So now we're just gonna get into the actual paper, um, the paper making. Thank you. All right, so I hope you guys have your, um, your paper, your, um, I'll just get my stuff. Your tape, your paper, your scissors. Okay, so if you guys have your scissors, your tape or glue, if you have glue, and then if you also have maybe a pencil just to kind of do some draft um, drawings. And then I always choose as well different colors for the actual pens because then you know which one is gonna be etching or which one's gonna be for cutting as well. So that's always a good idea for me as well. And then the actual paper itself and just in your head considering what fabric or material you might make out of that. Um, so while you guys kind of crack on, I am here for any questions as well um, and then afterwards I'll just give you guys maybe about 10 minutes five to ten minutes then we're going to see the digital version of this and how you can translate then the paper version to then be your digital version so you can use this time just for a little break but also to actually make start making the paper version um, and then yeah let me know if you have any questions thanks guys so just a reminder that we are actually going to be laser cutting stuff for you, just like you can see on the other screen of the laser cutter. Um, and we will then send that to you. So remember, if this is, a, you know, we, we're just going to use kind of like default fabrics. Um, so it's not going to be anything special. But if you have special um, uh, demands, you are free to do so. Uh, if you maybe send us the fabric desired fabric that you want to laser cut, that's also fine. But remember, you can't just leave something finished like that. So for example, the file that I'm about to show you now is actually like this. So I can actually show you while you guys work to for some inspiration. Um, that's gonna be this one. So if you guys can see the screen, uh, this is actually the rectangle bag. So if you just imagine the video we just saw, um, of the example of the lady um, making her bag. Imagine this is the wood part of it before you add the material. Then afterwards, you have the um, etching lines here. So again, this is here. And then you have the actual cutting through lines, which is the F there. Now, the F was very fragile, very small. As you can see, there's so many little lines there. Um, and just remember, you should actually close these off if you want an actual hole. So let me just give you an example. This is all gonna be one hole right there. That's just gonna be a square that's cut through. And then um, this is going to be cut. So then you're gonna have basically this hole, anything that's within inside these uh, black lines, that's all going to be um, a blank space. Now, again, we will email you all the details of exactly what this digital file needs to be like but it should ideally have this as kind of like a one point stroke on Illustrator or Photoshop. Um, and then uh, as well, if you just keep that consistent across all lines. Now, if you want to actually, um, let me just sit down. If you want to actually have more artwork showing, you can do so by literally having like an image that you want to do. You could do image trace. If, 
Some of you guys aren't familiar with image trace. I can show you an example now. Can anyone in the comments below just um, put like any random thing that you might like to um, etch on this bag? The first comment gets to choose what I get to just put on this bag. Then what I'm gonna do is show you how to image trace something so that it looks actually like this guy here. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you guys can see. So it, this is a picture of a flower. So I'm asking now if you can tell me uh, what other picture you might want to see and how I actually do this process on Illustrator there. So I don't know if we have anyone in the chat yet. Yeah, I'll give you one minute. And if I don't get anything, I'll pick a random picture. So it could be anything random. It could be an animal, it could be a plant or anything like that, that you want me to basically make is an artwork um, to then put on this bag. No, is everyone a bit shy? <laughs> okay, well, what I can do, Oh, oh, okay. Now, the, now they're coming. Um, okay, so we've got a flower and a lion head. Okay, so I have already done flower. Um, so I guess in this case, you could already see what that looks like. So in this case, let's try the lion head. That might be a little bit complicated, but let's go for it. Okay, so I'm just going to share it back on the actual website. Oh, actually, I'll do it to uh, desktop view so you can see everything. Okay, so let's do then the lion head. Okay, so we've got some beautiful images there of a lion head. What you could do is if this was already like a PNG file, that's perfect. You can just um, keep that as a PNG um, by itself without the cutting and all of that. If you want to keep it by itself, you just have that PNG there and then you can um, put that through the laser cutter software. But in this case, what we want to do is uh, just in a worst case scenario, you maybe have a picture of yourself even um, and then you have a picture like this. Maybe this one's quite nice. Um, then we would save that and we have to make it basically readable uh, so that we can see this as a laser cut file. So in this case now, we're going to insert that. So that should be in downloads. Uh, where's the lion's head? Oh, I think I saved it in the desktop actually. Yeah. Okay, so remember, also always try to make things to scale. Right now I'm working on an A3 file. Okay. Oh. So just to show you while it's kind of big there before I put it in the um, bag, uh, we're going to do image trace. So that is this option here once you've clicked on it. And then in this case, there are different options to image trace. And what that's going to do is basically vectorize this image. So in this case, let's try all the options because we don't know which one's going to work best for this. And this is specifically using Illustrator. And I think you can also do something similar with Photoshop, uh, but I always prefer Illustrator for vectors and so on. Okay, it might take a few minutes as you can see, uh, but on the other screen, you're probably seeing uh, the bag itself um, and how that is going. As you can see, it's actually blowing some of the paper because of the heat. Um, so that is normal as well. You might want to actually pause it and take it out, the little loose part, and then continue afterwards. So as you can see, this one has actually not really done anything to the photo, so we can then just gonna exit this chat. So we can then uh, basically try again. So it's a bit of trial and error. That's always what I encourage all the students to do, trial and error. I think we might be more successful with these guys down here. So let's try that one first. And what you can do afterwards is when this is all vectors. So just imagine you, when you use the pencil tool, um, you literally kind of just draw whatever you like freehand. But in this case, we're using this path um, to make these into vectors and then we can actually edit it afterwards as if we drew it from um, ourselves. So this is the shades um, of gray, which 
is okay, but not that great. Um, let's try the sketched art because I think that's going to be more successful. So there we go. Now we could already see that we have a more, um, I guess, more vectorized image there. And you can actually click expand. And then now you can see you have these blue lines. And usually with these blue lines, now we can actually move it and do whatever we like. If you do, obviously, the single um, isolation mode. So if you want to remove certain parts such as this, now that image that we've taken is actually now our own and we're actually editing that. So we said lion's head. So obviously now we don't want all these extra bits. So you can delete those like I did there. You might have some issues in certain areas just because of the way the picture has been read. So as here, we've got some gray going on. So we have to get rid of quite a lot of the things there, such as this. Um, and then you just kind of keep going through that until you're pretty much ready to go forward. So I'm just going to try just one more and see how that might look. Maybe silhouettes or black and white. Let's see. Okay, so silhouettes is definitely not great for this one. <laughs> Uh, but this one's much better. So the black and white one is much better. So if we expand that again, now we can edit that. So now in this case, I want to actually make this part of my actual bag. So I'm just going to rotate this. And then make it smaller. This is, again, a design feature, whatever you want to do. And then now maybe I might want to just add that here. So remember, this will work better with certain um, materials. And what it's going to do is it's going to ignore any white parts and it's just going to scratch all the black parts in this case. Now, this again, actually, I have to make that orange. You can only do that after you've clicked expand, um, which you saw earlier. Now, I want to make all of that orange, but actually the stroke, not the fill. Oops. And there we go. So it's going to ignore all of the uh, white parts and make the orange all of that. So as you can see, when we've done that, that's going to be a whole lot of work. How you can go about that is actually if you want it to be predominantly all of these black parts like this, because this looks like a much better image than when it turned orange, you can actually export this as its own file. So what that means is removing all of these other guys and then literally having this as its own file. And then you can lay that on top of the laser cutter on the software and then have that as a PNG file by itself. Or if you want it to be all um, with everything, you might just need to do quite a lot of work. So let me see if I do it the other, oh, if I do it the other way around, what it might look like. Again, it's always trial and error with this. Mind me from the person. Yeah. There's Clara who asked, "What is the maximum size the cutout can have?" Mm -hmm. So I'm almost assuming that piece of photo. Uh, the cutout. Do you mean like the size of the full, like the full scale of the laser cutter? Because if so, that is 30 centimeters by 50 centimeters. That's the maximum. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we have Christine who asked, "What material is the flower set example shown?" Oh, this flower example, uh, let me just stop showing the screen. The flower example is a velveteen fabric. Um, so a fake velvet, basically. Um, and as you can see, because it has kind of this property, kind of the furriness of it, um, it allows this then to look um, so much nicer when it's done because of the contrasting. Um, and then that's also the same with pretty much denim. Denim is a great one to do this with. Um, so if any of you guys want to do denim, maybe you have some old jeans that you want to make into a bag. Great example as well. So you can actually send that along as well. And actually, this is great in terms of sustainability. That's always what we try to do with all of our courses, get the students to think about sustainability, um, about as well the future of fashion. So in this case, if you're actually recycling something and making it into this bag that you want to do, definitely feel free to send us that. Obviously, there will be a little bit of pollution there when you're transporting it. But um, that's, again, some of the sustainability issues that you come across and that you could also solve um, or at least try to solve when you're on courses here as well. Yeah. Do we have any more questions there? Um, thank you. I don't know if I missed it, but so the image is not cut over. Is it exactly? 
Uh, so the image uh, that I just showed of the lion, so it's not a great example just because, again, this was uh, impromptu, but usually you would have to find a much better image that will allow you to then do something like this. So when you have that, uh, the reason why we did the image trace and then expand is because now it's then readable by the laser cutter. If you export that by itself as a PNG file, you're able to then etch something like this. You can do it on leather, you can do it on denim or the velveteen that you see on the screen. Um, and then in that case, that's literally your piece of artwork and you don't have to do it from scratch by yourself. That's the idea behind that. Um, there are tutorials on YouTube as well, just to help you with that process, which we can send along as well. Um, but the idea is that so you don't have to spend all this time trying to draw a flower if there are already pictures of flowers online, basically. But do be mindful of copyright, all right? I, I would use free pick. Uh, which is a website, free pick with a K instead of a C. Um, and that way you can actually get copyright free imagery there as well. Um, and then you can you can actually do this process with that. Um, and the flip side of it is actually, if you really wanted that, like for example, the lion head to be cut out, then you'd have to work on it a lot more. So if I just share my screen now, you will have to do a lot of work for this because again this is just an image we got online so it's not going to have the properties we want um, but in this case if i just kind of put it back to how it looked before if this is what it looked like when we um, image traced it and made it into the black and white um, this is then not able to cut because it cuts lines and it doesn't cut these like blocks of black basically so in this case you could either tr manually trace around it or just find another image that will allow you to have that. Um, in the case of the other, uh, the other version that we can see there, when we actually change the colors of the strokes, usually um, another important thing that I didn't mention, we actually have to uh, make sure there's no fill. Okay, guys, if you want to laser cut, make sure there is no fill like this. Again some important important information that will be read by the laser cutter. Um, and if you wanted to cut this, of course, it has to be all black instead of orange, firstly. And then secondly, uh, you have to make sure all of these things are actually closing uh, themselves. So in this case, what it will cut actually is all of that. Um, and then everywhere, basically along these lines that you see there, as well as these little bits there. So. If that's going to cut out, just imagine this is the outline of that shape alone. Then it's going to cut out inside of that, all of this um, stuff inside. But I would be mindful because, again, this is just an image we've extracted and expanded. You would have to remove little bits like this, um, for example. Um, and then we, oh, I think it has layers on. Yeah, so we have to then... Um, try to expand these because there's a lot of lines kind of overlapping, if you can see that. You can uh, make the stroke a little bit less uh, than that, but it is quite difficult again with this. So what I would suggest for this one is literally take the whole thing off and actually just draw it yourself. Um, and then that way you can fit it in as smoothly as, as you want. Um, and then you also have little shapes like this as well, which it's okay here, down here, but here now it's gonna get a little bit confusing. It's not the worst uh, case scenario, but stuff like this, it will look a little bit messy when you just have random holes, cause that would just create a hole since it's just one line, or it looks like two lines put to one, but in when it's actually cut out, it'll just look like a little line like that. And that's pretty much that. That's the reason why I would use an image. Otherwise you can just use the tools that are already on um, Illustrator, such as actually making your own shapes with the pen tool, um, as well as uh, the shapes for the uh, text as well. Just remember, if you're using text, we have to make this, because uh, imagine if you type this all in one go, that will be one word. And when you click on one of it, all of it would highlight. But as you can see, I've expanded this so that each letter is its own thing. The laser cutter won't read it as letters uh, in that case. It will read it as shapes that will cut individually or etch individually as, um, you know, depending on the artwork that you're trying to do. Um, so just be mindful of that as well. I know that's a lot, so I hope you guys were taking notes, but we can obviously send across some reminders of these things as well, so that when we receive your files, um, it's all set. Um, and then just kind of how you, let's say that we've kind of finished this. 
So just imagine you've got your handles maybe, or if you don't want to do it, if you want to do it like a clutch, then you have just this artwork there. You can also get rid of this black line as well, this border, if you don't want to. But as you can see, it's connected to this one. So you have a little bit of work to do to make sure that you can do that. You can also do kind of like the isolation uh, tool if you just double click. Uh, but now, just to show you how to export your file when it's done, because obviously I can see the time, uh, you'd have to click File, Export, Export As. And then we prefer, for P if it's PNG, that means then it's just a piece of artwork, like the flower one that I showed you, that's a PNG. In that case, the color doesn't really matter, actually, if it's all orange or all black. But if, uh, and that's the PNG, but if you want something to cut, just cut alone or actually to cut and etch as well, then what we're gonna have to do is make that into an SVG file. And then once you save that, you can obviously then uh, send it to us and we can see if that is fine and compatible with our uh, laser cutter. And then, yeah, that's pretty much that. There are some questions. Yeah. I'm wondering what contact to give them to send this stuff. Um, oh yes, I can just type it in here actually. Oh yeah, but you can go ahead with the questions. Um, so, we have the same fabric, right? When, if I want two different colors, should I send two fabric? Uh, if you want different colors, and uh, yeah, that, that's absolutely fine. Um, for the uh, laser cutting itself, if you want to send fabrics along, you're free to do so at any any point, really. Obviously, the sooner the better, while everything's still fresh in your head. Um, and you can actually get the full address um, on the uh, on Google uh, as well. Um, and then once we receive that, then just make sure you kind of put a reference in there that this is for laser cutting bag workshop. Um, and that way, we all know what this random fabric will be for. Should I put your name? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, you can address it to me. Uh, so I can see about how the laser cutter differentiates cutting from etching. Um, so that is through the colors that you're going to give it. So if you remember for the cutting, we said we'll use black. You don't always have to do it that way, but I just tell all my students to do that so that it's clear for all of us what we're trying to achieve. So it's the black lines um, for the cutting and the orange lines for the etching. Now I'm just going to pull out uh, this, maybe if you mm -hmm. can put the... Oh, can we, can we make this one the, uh, the hard oh, yeah. one? I'm just gonna show you now what the outcome looks like so you get more of a clearer idea of exactly what that is. Okay, so now you can see, obviously we've got our cut uh, piece here. So here, everything's gonna be falling apart for all the black lines that you did. Some bits might still be kind of stuck on just because maybe they cut through properly. But as you can see now we have this, this is the hole that has now cut out. And then now we've got our little cute bag there. So again, this is an example for one of my students. So this is what they made into that. And then you would basically kind of fold it there. Um, and then you can fold these guys as the gussets. So in this case, I mentioned that if you have an etching line, it can etch. Um, but in this case, because it's paper, it didn't quite do that. You can only get that with certain fabrics. So, but that's no worries because this one's quite easy to actually um, do. So we can just fold this inside like this, and then we can obviously fold this one or however they were wanting to fold it. And then you might want to then obviously fold this guy so it matches. Um, and this is quite paper, that's why I've got some writing on the back. But as you can see, the bag is already starting to form. In this case, they didn't have seam allowance. So in that case, um, I don't know if you guys can actually see, but yeah, we've got our little handbag there. So they didn't have seam allowance there. Um, so in this case, maybe they might want to actually just do some hole puncturing here. Um, and then on the other side, and then actually just thread some thread through that. And then that obviously all comes together. Um, and then there are other ways of doing that as well, such as just um, maybe just gluing the parts that you have. It depends what material. If you imagine this with plywood, that's going to be much easier to actually do that uh, with. Um, and then you can actually attach your 
handles maybe if she had a hole in the sides that could then be you know kind of the handle of that um, or even the other side as well and that's pretty much that really so again this is why i um make sure i would make sure that yeah, you, you have actually, actually tested it for this first you have tested it on your scrap paper such as the one again that i did earlier once you've tested it on there you can see which parts will need to be folded how it's going to look where it's actually together and in this case she wanted the clutch to actually overlap and actually she wanted this to, to wrap around as well so that's really um, an example of a clutch one there. As you can see, there's no gussets in this case. So in this case, maybe it's just kind of like a running stitch across here with the sewing machine. Um, and then we've got a nice hole there that would obviously then be cut through the laser cutter to have then the um, string or whatever you're using to actually have the, the handles for. And that's that. So once you have that, uh, now obviously when you go away in your own time, you can just lay that flat and then trace over it with um, the illustrator. So that's, that can be done by literally taking a photo, photo of it. Um, and once you've taken a photo, photo of it, you can then um, just upload that on the illustrator, trace around it with a pen tool, however you prefer. Maybe you prefer another way on Photoshop. Um, and then that's pretty much that. And just remember to measure it to scale. Um, otherwise, if I receive something that's too big, I'm just gonna make it whatever size that fits the laser cutter and that's what you will yeah, that's what you'll receive. Yeah? Yeah, Christina asked, if we don't send fabric, can we still send a file? Which is, yes. And is there yes. a time limit? Is there a time limit to send a file? Like a deadline? Yes. Yeah, so um, initially, I didn't have a deadline for this. But actually, I think it would be great maybe within the next two weeks, if you're able to send your files, then um, as soon as I receive it, then I can obviously make it out of the default fabrics that we have around here. But if you have specific ones that you'd like to use, you can obviously send them across again within the same time frame within two weeks, and then you will receive them back again within uh, the next two weeks. So within the, the whole month, month uh, coming up, up, then you'll be able, able to get, get that, that as well. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, no more questions? No, that seems to wrap it up, I think, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, it has obviously been a very quick one. And I understand there's so many uh, uh, details that I gave. But if you would like to know some more information, do send me an email, foundry at ifaparis.com. And then I can give you a little bit of guidance as well if you need with your files. You can send them before they actually complete as well, just to check it over. Because um, I, I understand if this is your first time doing this, it can be a little bit daunting and you might not know exactly what you're doing, especially since we're not face to face. But at least you were able to join me today and actually see what we have at the lab. And you can actually maybe hopefully join us with one of our courses, the MBA or the bachelor's that I mentioned earlier. Um, and again, go to the ifaparis.com website